بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله I just prayed in the masjid with the Muslimin here in Zanzibar in a local masjid close to my residence and what is noteworthy and interesting just to see the status of the Muslims khayrihi wa sharrihi the good and the bad uh, this masjid it seemed like you know one of the general masjids it's a brand new masjid a small very small brand new they're still working on it so a lot of them were the construction workers and some of the local brothers praying there and in the masjid when it came time to pray pray the imam established the prayer based upon the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam straightening the rows and his appearance and general the prayer and everything was in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then after we prayed and he began to make dhikr, he made dhikr in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by mentioning some of the du'at that are mentioned according to the sunnah Allahumma, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya dhal jalali wal ikram وغير ذلك and other than that from the sunnahs uh, mentioned and then afterwards so I thought in my with my limited observation thought you know this is beautiful that I happen to be in a place where they're practicing the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know I found this masjid it was close to my residence and I was able to pray with the believers but then he began to do some group dhikr and then he appointed someone to actually lead the supplication. And so this brother led the supplication and people, uh, you know, said Amin and recited along with him. And the Imam at one point said Al-Fatiha, which is a well-known practice amongst many of the Sufi communities around the world. In Yemen I used to experience this. In, my, in a local masjid in which I lived in a small area at one point and prayed there frequently and the Imam would speak Qala la Qala Rasul but then he was actually I found out later he was a, a Sufi because it would the, the point being Habitifillah is you'll see the libas libasa sunnah you'll see the uh, outward appearance and you know that love for the sunnah so we can't take that away from our brothers, but what we do take away from this as a lesson is the importance of adhering to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and avoiding things which are ghayr mashroor, you know, making new types of dhikr and adhkar, uh, making, you know, yelling out al-fatiha and then the, you know, the... Uh, then the believers, what they do, the congregation will say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, and dhikr adhkar like this, you know, praising the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which are all acts of good, but they are not in their proper place. And this is what, falling under the sun, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fuurad, whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. So that means that someone is trying to change a prophetic practice or do something which is not, was not done in accordance with how the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, practiced it. And this is why it's very important to ilm, why we have to have knowledge, correct knowledge, because without knowledge of the sunnah, you cannot practice the sunnah. So those are just some important points. And it was still a relief to be with my brothers. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide them. And I think here in Zanzibar, anyhow, it has a long history of Sufism, as with probably most of Africa, if not all. 
and probably much of the world in Asia and in many countries and even in the Arab Peninsula. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the Muslims, bless the Muslims,